What's up guys, it's Saw and Malik back here, and Solo A Star Wars Story just came out last Friday, it is finally out in theaters, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen it, I actually got to see it on Thursday, which was really awesome, and I actually really enjoyed the film, I know a lot of people thought it was really average, a lot of people really hated it, but for me, I actually really liked it, it's one of the better Star Wars movies for me, I just had a really good time watching the entire film, but I know a lot of you guys have not seen the movie yet, so because of that, there will be no spoilers in this video, we're just going to be talking about some general things, how I like the characters, and how I like the different actors that play the different characters in the movie and the movie's overall feel in general but we're not gonna be talking about any plot details or anything like that so I thought now would be a really great time to compare some of the minifigures to their actual characters in the movie so enough about me talking let's get right into these minifigures here starting off with the main man himself Han Solo here this is Alden Ehrenreich's version of Han Solo so this is young Han Solo the one that we get in the movie and I gotta say, I'm actually really happy with this minifigure. I think LEGO did a great job with it. One of the most interesting parts about this minifigure to me is the actual face print for it. I think it does a really good job of blending a young Harrison Ford with the new actor, Alden Ehrenreich. Every time I look at the face, you can definitely see Harrison Ford in this, and I can also see Alden Ehrenreich in this face as well. So I think LEGO did a great job. I think they actually did such a good job. They actually did a better version than Disney did here, trying to recreate young Han Solo. This definitely looks like more of a young Han Solo than Alden Ehrenreich does as Han Solo in this new movie. Not to take anything away from Alden Ehrenreich though, I think he did a great job as Harrison Ford. But enough about the actors here, let's talk about the actual minifigure. The minifigure does look very much like the character here, I think the prints are great. The jacket, I think Lego did a perfect job on, it looks just like it does in the actual reference picture here. The pants and the holster and everything are great as well. He also has a signature blaster there. Everything about this figure is perfectly fine, it's not a really complicated figure to make. I mean the overall look of Han Solo here is pretty simplistic, he just has a regular old jacket with a holster and a t-shirt and whatnot. So I think Lego actually did a great job with this minifigure. It's a little bit unfortunate, it's only included in one of the larger sets. We do get another version of Han Solo in Han Solo's Landspeeder, but he doesn't really wear that outfit throughout too much of the movie, and this is the iconic one that I think everybody wants. It's a little bit unfortunate, it's in such a large set, but hopefully we'll be seeing in a smaller set sometime soon. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do for Han Solo. Now let's get on to our next minifigure here, which is going to be Chewbacca. He was really great in this movie, as he usually always is. I love how this movie actually got to give him more of a storyline. He had more of a story arc than he does in most Star Wars films. Most Star Wars films, he's more of a side character in this. He was a little bit more prominent, which I really like that they did. Chewbacca in the movies hasn't really changed much though, the only thing that's different here is that his bandolier now has two straps instead of one, and he's not using his signature bowcaster, he was using a regular rifle here. And LEGO actually changed their minifigure quite a bit, I'm not sure why they did this, I thought they were just going to use the regular Chewbacca mold and then just mold the new bandolier on top of that. But they actually went with a completely new mold here for Chewbacca, and I can't say I'm too big of a fan of it, it does look a little bit weird to me. I do think I like the old mold a little bit better than this one, this one the head shaping just looks a little bit off in my opinion. I think the other one did a better job of looking more like Chewbacca. The minifigure here also only has a rifle because that's what he'll be using instead of the bowcaster. But yeah, overall I just don't think that LEGO did a great job with this new mold. Hopefully they'll be changing it sometime soon or be changing up the prints on it a little bit to make it look a little bit more realistic and a little bit more like Chewbacca. To me it just doesn't look that much like Chewbacca. It just looks like a regular Wookiee that we'll see on Kashyyyk or something. But hopefully LEGO does change up this minifigure a little bit. I definitely prefer the old one but that's going to do it for Chewbacca. Let's get on to our next minifigure here, which is going to be Lando Calrissian, who is played by the amazing Donald Glover. And before we talk about the minifigure here, I gotta say I really loved him in this movie. I think he was a perfect casting choice for Lando Calrissian, and he definitely did sound like Billy D. Williams in so many different scenes. He definitely had his own take on Lando as well, which when you guys see the movie you'll see, but I definitely think he did an amazing job. Disney did a great job casting him as Lando Calrissian. And yeah, enough about me gushing about Donald Glover here. Let's talk about the minifigure and how it compares to the character in film. And I think Lego did a great job here. This is a perfect minifigure, I guess you could say. I mean, his outfit is not the most overtop thing in the world. It's definitely pretty simplistic. It has some simple colors going on here with the yellow and black and the dark blue for the cape. I think Lego did a great job with it, though. The face here for Donald Glover, I think, is really well done. It definitely does capture the look of the actor. To me, it doesn't look too much like Billy Dee Williams at all, but I think that's okay. I mean, the character that they're trying to portray here is Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian. So I think they did a great job with it. His hairpiece is also cool as well. It could have been a little bit more accurate, but using a LEGO 
mini figure hairpiece. This is the best thing they could come up with. So yeah, overall it's a great figure. The prints here are also super accurate. You can also see his scarf, which continues on from his torso down to his legs, which is also really accurate. He also has a silver blaster. I definitely think that probably should have been like a regular pistol mold instead of the longer blaster mold, but that's fine. You can switch that out on your own. And the cape is also perfect. It's actually a printed cape as well. So it has two different color tones on it, which I think Lego did a great job on. It definitely captures the look of Lando here. And yeah, overall it's a great character in the movie. This is a great minifigure as well again this minifigure is only included in that one super large Kessel Run Millennium Falcon set which is a little bit unfortunate hopefully we'll be seeing him in another set sometime soon I doubt we will but I definitely want a cheaper way to get this minifigure and yeah that's pretty much gonna do it for Lando now let's get on to our next character here which is going to be Kira she is definitely one of the most important characters in this film once you guys watch the movie you'll see what I'm talking about but yeah I really liked Amelia Clark as this new character that we get to see in the Star Wars universe I really loved how mysterious and badass she was in the movie but enough about the character let's take a look at the minifigures here there is actually another version of Kira that we get to see but this is the main outfit that she wears in the movie so this is the one we're gonna be talking about and looking at the minifigure here this is probably one of the worst minifigures in this uh, wave of solo Star Wars story sets just because it doesn't really look too much like Amelia Clark in my opinion and that's not really Lego's fault I think it's really hard to capture Amelia Clark in Lego form mainly because her eyes are one of her most signature features and Lego has pretty standard eyes for most of their minifigures they all kind of have the same printing for the eyes and they just have different things around it which captures the looks of the different actors but for Amelia Clark here she doesn't have any like facial hair or anything like Lando does so you can use that to capture the look of the character and it just doesn't look too much like Amelia Clark to me every time I look at this minifigure I definitely don't see Amelia Clark this kind of just looks like a generic female head to me the hair piece and the printing on the torso and everything else are fine though I think the printing on the torso is extremely accurate the only thing that I don't like about the torso is I think the color that they went with for this torso piece might be a little bit off now that I look at it compared to this reference image here it's definitely too much like a tan color and definitely should be a little bit more like a lighter gray uh, the hair piece and everything is fine though I think the blaster should have been silver but that's a small fix and she's wearing a skirt here instead of pants but Lego can't really do a good job portraying that here in minifigure form so I think that what they did was fine so overall this definitely is not one of the better minifigures in this wave I don't think it just doesn't look too much like Amelia Clark to me but that's just my opinion so if you guys disagree with that or anything make sure you go down in the comments below and let me know but now let's get on to our next character here. I'm kind of just going in terms of importance in the movie. And that next character here is going to be Tobias Beckett, who is played by the amazing Woody Harrelson. Now I know the reference image here is a little bit off. This is not the same suit that he's wearing as this minifigure. This reference image is actually his main outfit in the film, whereas this minifigure is just one of the outfits he wears throughout the film. So I couldn't really find a reference image for the Imperial outfit here, so I just kind of went with this one. They aren't really that different though. The trench coat that he wears is pretty much the exact same. The only thing that's different is the Imperial armor underneath all of it. The leg printing is actually definitely still accurate here. He has the regular gray pants with the same holsters that we saw in Han Solo there. But yeah, I think Lego did a great job with the printing there. I think the printing for the Imperial armor looks fine as well. I can remember what it looks like from the movie, and I think Lego did a great job with that. One of the biggest differences here is that he's wearing a hat instead of the hairpiece, but we're probably going to be seeing him in one of the two new solo sets that we're going to be getting later this summer, and I definitely think he's going to be in one of those sets, so hopefully we get this regular version of Tobias Beckett in one of those. One thing I did want to talk about here is his pistols. They were super awesome in the film. I really liked how Tobias Beckett was just twirling them around constantly. It really looked like a classic cowboy in the Star Wars universe. I think Disney did a really cool job with that he was a really cool looking character and definitely stands out in the film uh, one of the cool things about the blasters though is that they are almost like blades in the movie and because of that they're a little bit more sleek and they don't really look that bulky so I think Lego probably should have brought back the classic blaster molds that we used to see in some of the battle packs all the way back in 2008 it was pretty much the exact same mold as the blaster that we see here except the top portion of the scope is actually missing so it makes it a lot more sleek and kind of smaller and everything and I think that would have fit more perfectly Lego actually did used to make those all the way back in the day in 2008. I only have two of those pistols in my own collection. I think Leo did definitely get rid of that mold, which is a little bit unfortunate. It would have fit here really perfectly. Hopefully they bring it back, but I doubt they ever will. They kind of seem to be sticking with this blaster mold they have here, which is completely fine as well. At least they're in silver, which is really accurate to the movie. The face for Tobias Beckett here, I think Leo did an okay job with. It kind of looks like Woody Harrelson to me. I can definitely see it when I look into this minifigure. It's not the most accurate looking minifigure compared to the actor here, but I think Lego did definitely capture the look enough to get the look of Woody Harrelson across. So every time you look at this minifigure, you can definitely tell this is Tobias Beckett. 
It definitely can also look like any other actor trying to be Tobias Beckett. It doesn't really look too much like Woody Harrelson, in my opinion. But I think Lego still did a great job with this minifigure overall. And hopefully we'll be seeing a regular version of this character in another set sometime soon. But that's going to do for Tobias Beckett. Let's get on to our next one here. Now the rest of these minifigures in this video are not going to be real characters from the film. These are more like side characters that we get to see that LEGO just made minifigures of. So we're going to start things off with Moloch here. And I think LEGO did a great job with it. He's definitely not one of the most memorable characters in this movie. I actually kind of hated his set. I don't know why LEGO went ahead and made that thing. I know it definitely has to go against Han Solo's land speeder to recreate that scene. But it was just, it's not really a great looking vehicle. And there was definitely other scenes from the movie that I would have rather seen as a LEGO set instead of Moloch's land speeder. But enough about the actual set looks like the minifigure here and i think leo did a great job with it this reference picture is actually a cardboard cutout poster this was the only reference image i could find of malak here and i think leo did a great job with it. the prints are really accurate they have all this white kind of like Karelian snow or dust I don't, i'm not really sure what it was all over his uniform here he also has a staff and it's not actually in this image here for the minifigure but he does include a staff in the set as well which is pretty accurate the head mold from malak is also quite accurate here i think leo did a good job with it this is a new head mold for this character and yeah not much else to say about Moloch here he's a really accurate looking minifigure I think Lego did a great job and I was just probably other things I would have rather seen as a set other than this guy's set but enough about Moloch let's get on to our next minifigure here which is actually going to be another minifigure that was included in his set and this is Rebolt I believe I could have that name wrong if I do have that name wrong let me know down in the comments below and this is another side character that we barely see in the film. I mean, he's really irrelevant. And I know you're looking at the reference image here and you're like, what is that supposed to be? And that's pretty much because I couldn't really find a reference image for Rebolt here. He's just that irrelevant in the movie. They didn't actually have an official picture of him here. So this is the closest thing I could find. It was another Hasbro toy, I believe, or I could be wrong about that. It was just an action figure that's based on the same character. And so comparing the Lego minifigure to this action figure here, I think Lego did a great job with it. The Lego minifigure is actually a little bit more detailed in my opinion it has all the markings of the snow slash dust on Corellia here and it definitely has all the torso markings that it needs with that little hoop necklace thing he has going there I'm not sure if that's a new head mold for this minifigure though I don't think it is I think we might have seen this with some of the row one sets I believe if I'm not mistaken but the only thing he's missing here is that orange thing on top of his head but I'm glad Lego didn't make a new mold for this thing because it would have made the price for that set even higher and it's definitely not needed for a character like this but enough about Rebolt he's not really that important let's get on to our next minifigure here which is going to be an Imperial TIE pilot there's some other cooler Imperial figures in this wave let's start things off with one of the most unoriginal minifigures from this wave and that's because this is a tie pilot we've seen this minifigure a bunch of times before so it's not really much too much to talk about this it's a accurate looking minifigure the prints here are great the head mold is great and everything let's get on to our next one here which is one of the more interesting imperial figures that we have here this is the imperial patrol trooper i believe i could have that name wrong again if i do have that name wrong let me know down in the comments below and this is one of the new stormtrooper variants we get to see in this movie i think lego did a great job with it i think it does look really cool as well this reference image here again is another action figure because I couldn't find a perfect uh, white background image for this minifigure but I think Lego did a great job with it the Lego minifigure actually looks a lot cooler than the regular action figure here it has a lot more details along the grill and everything with the gunmetal gray printing along the regular part of the grill it looks really accurate there's a lot of printing and detail here overall the helmet just looks really cool I think this is one of the new stormtrooper helmets that we're getting as part of this wave we also getting another new stormtrooper helmet with the Minban stormtrooper which we'll be taking a look at in just a second but yeah overall this is a really cool minifigure we got to see him in that battle pack set which actually included a speeder from the actual movie which i really liked i really liked that set i think Lego did a great job with it giving us real vehicles from the actual movies in small sets like that but yeah overall it's a really great looking stormtrooper i'm glad that we're getting new versions of the stormtroopers and yeah let's get on to our next minifigure here which is going to be the mimban stormtrooper and this guy looks really awesome it almost looks like a captain phasma minifigure that's been like just brained on with dirt and mud and everything but it's actually a regular stormtrooper here pretty much with a black cape on and then it has all this dirt and everything on it and the reference picture here is another action figure but this is a really highly detailed action figure so this was the best way to get the most detail out of this character here and i think lego did a great job with it it looks perfect in my opinion the light gray was a good choice to go with here i'm glad they didn't go with the regular white and just printed mud on top of it i think this looks a lot more accurate the new helmet mold looks a little bit bulky in my opinion it looks really large i'm not sure how i feel about this new helmet mold yet i might actually prefer the old one still i'm not really too sure about it yet haven't really made up my mind 
but they do have a new helmet mold here for the stormtroopers and I guess it looks okay. The printing here is all over the place and it looks dirty and gritty and that's perfect for this character or this minifigure really. It's not really a character in the movie. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much going to do it for the Min Man Stormtrooper. I'm glad to get another new Imperial Stormtrooper variant for this movie and in Lego sets as well. Let's get on to our next minifigure here which is going to be Quay Tolsite. This is one of the Pike Syndicate members that are going to be part of this new Solo a Star Wars Story film. And I know the reference image here is completely off, and that's because I couldn't actually find a reference picture for this character. So this is the closest thing I could come up with. These are the Pike Syndicate members from the Clone Wars TV series. And this is actually the same species as what he is. So this is why I use this reference picture for this minifigure. So I can't really do too much of a comparison here since I don't really have a reference picture to look at. But I definitely think LEGO did a good job with the head mold here, which in the movie is a more realistic of the version of the helmet that we get to see for the Pike Syndicate members in the Clone Wars TV series. So as you can see in the reference picture here, it looks a lot more like part of their head. Whereas in the movie, it looks like more of a helmet. And I think that's fine. It's just it's really awesome to see more Clone Wars characters in the movie here I think Disney is doing a great job by trying to implement more Clone Wars stuff into movies like this It definitely just makes this universe seem a lot more seamless and a lot more blended together Which is really awesome to see but that's gonna do it for Quay Tolsite And I think we might have one more minifigure here if I'm not mistaken Which is probably gonna be the Corellian Hound. Yeah, okay So we have the Corellian Hound here, which I forgot to mention I probably should have mentioned this with Malak Which because that was the set that it was included in and I think Leo did a good job with this, this is actually a new mold for this small animal creature here. There's not really much more you could ask from LEGO here. It definitely looks as ferocious and as scary as it does need to look like. The only thing they maybe could have added was some like straps for these straps he has on his back here, but that would have been completely extra for a minifigure like this. I think LEGO did a fine job on this minifigure and it definitely does look great. And yeah, I think that's pretty much going to do for all the different characters or minifigures that we get to see in this new wave of Solo A Star Wars Story sets. We're going to be seeing more minifigures in the new two sets that we're going to be getting later this summer. And maybe I'll be doing a comparison video when we get those characters. Depends on the minifigures that we get in these sets. But yeah, make sure to go down in the comments below and let me know what you guys think about all this. Let me know if you guys think LEGO did a good job with these minifigures or if they did a bad job. Let me know what you guys think about Solo A Star Wars Story. Let me know if you guys have actually seen it yet. I've seen it and I definitely loved it. And if you guys didn't like it or loved it that's completely okay we all have different opinions here and that's completely fine let's just keep it civil in the comment section below when we're talking about these different characters and uh yeah guys that's pretty much gonna do it for this video so if you guys enjoyed watching this make sure to hit that like button and if you guys want to see tons of more lego star wars videos just like this one make sure to subscribe to my channel but yeah guys that's pretty much gonna do it for me thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace